Tallow is simply melted beef fat, whereas lard is fat from the pig. That's something people might be more familiar with, but lard is from a specific part of the animal, the suet, which is the fat stored around the kidneys. And depending on where you get the fat from will directly correlate to the taste of the fat as well as the final product. And not only is the part of the animal important, what is above that is what the animal was fed. If you take fat from a grain-fed animal and compare it to the fat from a grass-fed animal, it is night and day. It makes a food that's actually inedible into one of the tastiest things you've ever had. If you guys want to see that difference, check out the grass-fed versus grain-fed video. I'm going to link at the end here. Now, animals are predisposed to having fat deposits on certain parts of their body. And when you feed an animal grain, that just means those fat deposits are going to be filled up quicker with crappy fat. Uh, you can fatten up an animal on grass, it's just more difficult to do so and requires a certain quality of pasture. So today we're going to render some beef tallow. Render just means melt down. And there's two things that I'm essentially showing you guys here. One is low temperature and two is making sure it's nice and cut up and small so that it melts evenly. There's not much more to it, but it's very important to cook your fats at a minimal temperature to reduce oxidation and degradation of nutrients. If you take beef fat and you essentially simmer it or boil it instead of melting it low and slow, you're gonna oxidize the fats, it's gonna denature the nutrients, it's gonna be harder to digest, it's gonna be more stress on your body when you eat it. And the reason we're heating this at a very low temperature is because tallow is typically used for cooking, so when we go to cook with it later, it hasn't been extensively heated. Uh, the main problem with oxidation in fats is when you heat them to a high temperature over and over again. Since we're melting this tallow at a low temperature, it will be okay to cook with it in the future. Uh, cooking with tallow more than two or three times, it's usually recommended that you take it out of the pan, especially once you've taken it to the smoke point. Here I have some beef fat from a local farm. Uh, this is actually coarse ground already, so I don't have to cut it up. This is how they just package it. I didn't actually request this. Uh, I do have some other beef here with more yellow fat. Uh, you know, the fat can get really orange and deep yellow. Uh, check out some of my day of eatings if you want to see some orange beef fat. But it, it's pretty difficult to get consistently. So this is what we're using today. So I just put the pot on a fairly low heat. You can always raise the heat. You know, just come back in 15, 20 minutes. See if the beef fat's melting. If it's not, then you can raise the heat. And yeah, you could put this on a high heat and just be careful and watch it melt, but we, we don't really want to do that. This is going to take an hour or two anyway. Not a process you usually rush. Since this is already ground up, all I really have to do is just put it in the pot and then break it up with my hands. And it breaks up very easily. And it, ne it absolutely needs to be cut, you know, as small as you can. I would say if you can cut the pieces to about this big, that would be good. Any bigger than this and you're compromising how evenly it melts. You could also do this in the oven on a low temperature if you wanted to. So we'll check on this in a half hour, but I have everything ready for when it's done. So we're gonna strain the fat into this pot and then we're gonna pour the strained fat from this pot into the jar where we will store it. It's been about half an hour. You can kind of see on the sides here, there's a bunch of melted fat. This is what we want. The fat's melted and this is still cold, so it's melting very slowly. So it's been another hour and the beef fat is melting incredibly slowly. I turned the heat up a little bit so that we're not gonna be here all day. So it's been about another hour and the fat still has never been brought to a simmer. We're keeping it at an incredibly low temperature. Now, you might look in here and think there's still some more fat to melt, yes, but what I like doing is straining off this fat and then rendering down the rest later and separating it into two batches. One that was an incredibly low temperature and then the second batch which was the remnants that were rendered afterwards. So really simple. Just pouring the beef fat off through a strainer. There's a, there's a lot of meat in here compared to most of the fat I get. So this tallow might taste a little bit like meat as opposed to beef fat. And that's probably why I looked like there was so much in here. As you guys can see, there's a lot of, it's mostly meat in here, not really fat. Now, 
This stuff, you can continue to render it down if you want the rest. You could actually fry this up, see the crispy bits. Those are really tasty with salt on them. They don't stay well after we do this, so you would want to eat these immediately or at least the same day. And they kind of get soggy in a day or two. They're not nearly as good. We have our beef fat mixture. And this is very hot, so you can let this cool off a little bit if you want to. But make sure you have a jar that is tempered so the jar doesn't shatter. The jar is super hot. I grab it by the lid. That's still cool. And I put it somewhere safe to cool off. I don't put the lid on it because what happens is if you seal the lid, the heat will almost form a vacuum seal on it. So if you want to be able to open the towel later, don't seal it. Wait till it cools off before you seal it. All right, boys and girls, we'll check on these in a couple hours. So our beef fat is all cooled off. And as you can see, it's much lighter in color. What happens when you heat beef fat is it really brings out the color in the fat. If you have some grass-fed fat that you warm up slightly in the oven, it might go from a whitish beigey color like this to literally yellow or orange. There's a big difference between the grain-fed and the grass-fed fat that becomes even more evident when it's heated. So the texture of this, it's, it's pretty hard. You know, you can scoop this out with the spoon uh, with a little bit of effort fairly easily, but it's definitely not super easy to work with. If you guys are looking for a fat that is easier to scoop and, and melts a little quicker, I would look at any sort of rendered poultry fat. Uh, maybe pork lard even is a bit better. I've noticed that beef tallow has one of the highest melting temperatures and it's, it's thicker than the other rendered fats. So keep that in mind guys. It's not necessarily the easiest to work with, but uh, it's one of the more affordable ones that's high quality. And I use a lot of it in my cosmetic products that I make. I use it in my moisturizing cream as well as my lip balm. So that's something exciting you guys have to look forward to in the future. Now, do we lose vitamins when we render this fat? It's a small amount, probably between 10 and 30%, depending on how high of a temperature you heat this product. The issue occurs with the digestion of the product. When you heat fats, when you oxidize them, when you denature them, they digest much quicker in your stomach and your body can't really digest it as effectively as raw fat. So what happens when you eat raw fat is your body digests it slowly at a certain rate. By rendering the fat, you are essentially concentrating the calories, reducing the water content, and making it hit your stomach harder. And if that fat is oxidized, if it's rancid, your body's not going to absorb it effectively. That's why some people have diarrhea when increasing their fat intake. It could be because the fat is too heavily rendered or it's a high omega-6 fat. Uh, you guys can check out my carnivore constipation video to know more about that. Since we're rendering it at a low temperature, you can consume this rendered fat without as much issue as most other tallows on the market or if you made it yourself at a higher temperature. This also allows you to cook with it multiple times because it's less oxidized. So keep that in mind when you're consuming this. If you're having an issue, you might want to opt for some lighter cooked fat. This is actually the beef tallow we are offering on my new company, Frankie's Free Range Meat. It comes with the pemmican and jerky package as well as the fat package. So if you guys want some low temperature rendered beef tallow as well as some other products in addition to that, you can check that out frankiesfreerangemeat.com. We will be offering it separately in the future as well as some other very exciting animal fat based recipes. So stay tuned for that. Check out the website for some more information on the mission and some speculation on what products we will be offering in the future. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, which is right next to the subscribe button and share the video if you can. Down below in the comments is a bunch of resources ranging from my website to my Amazon shop, my Patreon, uh, just ways you can support me as well as my personal website where you can reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations if you are interested in improving your overall health through a nutrient-dense, animal-based lifestyle. You guys enjoy the rest of the weekend.